Thank you for joining me for College Playground. I'm your host, Sydney Simone. Today, I am joined with former Purdue track star, Kyle Webb, um, now into bodybuilding. Um, he's done a number of things on the track as well as off the track. So thank you so much for joining me. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine. Great. Thanks. Just living life as an adult now. <laughs> So where exactly are are you living now? I know you're outside of the United States. So where are you now? So I moved to uh, Australia in 2019, I want to say. Um, I was here for a track meet in 2018, representing my country. And I really loved it, like the, the surroundings, the people, the environment. Um, so I said, why not? Like, I didn't really have anything tying me to the U.S. So I just went on a whim and just moved. <laughs> It's crazy because I was talking to um, a, a friend and former teammate. She actually uh, plays basketball in Australia now. So, yeah, uh, wow. Yeah, so the second person I know that's over there. Um, but you're originally from Bermuda. So, yep. uh, talk about that and just the cultural differences between like Bermuda, the States, and Australia. And was that like a, a, a cultural shock or adjustment there? I would say when I was. Bermuda to the U.S., there's not really much difference besides, like, food a little bit. But the U.S. is so diverse that you have all different cultures in whatever state you go to. You can find, like, Caribbean food um, in the U.S., which is really great to find those odd little spots <laughs> in the mm -hmm. U.S. when you shop around. Um, but no, Bermuda is really Americanized. Uh, the only difference is that there's no real international business. So Bermuda, there's a law in Bermuda where you can't really have international business. You, there's no like McDonald's or anything. So okay. Bermudians love like when they go to the U.S. So like, oh, yeah, McDonald's, like finally got to eat McDonald's. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you're always bringing someone like a family friend or like a family member. Oh, bring me back to like a cheeseburger or something from McDonald's because that's like the greatest gift you can bring somebody back home because we just don't have those things. Um when it comes to Australia, Australia is very different. It's it's not uh, people people are very different out here. It's not easy to make friends. It's like compared to the U.S., everybody's friendly. Um, people are really stuck in their own ways out here. Um, they kind of carry their friendships throughout their lives, and if not, they kind of just fall off, and that's that's just reality. Um, but no, it's not really easy to make friends with Australians. There's a lot of New Zealanders out here. And they're really friendly people, but even still, they just, it's really community-based in Australia. Hmm, that's interesting. I, I think I saw a TikToker the other day um, that was making videos about living in Australia. And some things did look similar from the looks of it. Um, yeah. but who knows? I um, might need to vacation there or something one day. I actually had a friend that did a, a study abroad there as well, too. So Yeah, but, but I'm from like Sydney or, or Victoria. And that's what everybody says but if you go to Sydney or Victoria. Oh, yeah, Sydney. Yeah, that's exactly where she went to Sydney. <laughs> yeah. um, it hints my name, so I probably didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so what led to your decision uh, to go to Purdue and run track to leave your home country and what you know to go not only hours and miles away, but overseas? Um, it was it's really opportunity based when I was growing up in high school. I, I honestly never had any thought about school like further schooling or anything um honestly never knew what was next for me but I was doing really like ex really exceptionally well for track for my country as as a my I guess a high schooler I represented my country um in several different countries around the world um I had various scouting opportunities for for D1 schools but sadly I got in a motorcycle accident when I was 17 my before I was just before my senior year of high school um, I lacerated my kidney and my liver, fractured the first bone out of my collarbone and punctured my lung. I was in ICU for about a week. Um, and my mom just really didn't want that in the news because I was just uh, a rising star in the community as an athlete. And she said, this is literally going to ruin everything. Um, it's kind of crazy. It's just one of those typical stories like the athlete gets into a big accident or something happens and then that's their career. <laughs> but that's like, yeah, I've lived that. Um, all those schools like that wanted me didn't want me anymore um so the long route i had to go to junior college first my family paid for junior college 
and I got scouted by Purdue and a few other schools. Um, but yeah, and then I chose Purdue. So uh, where did you go for junior college? And at, at, at some point in your mind, did you think, okay, this might be the end, even if you did go to junior college, you may not pick up um, those big scholarships or, you know, produce the big 10. So you still ended at a good school, but did, at some point, um, did you think, you know, junior college is it or this I'm I'm done for? No, I always wanted to go to, to another, like uh, the D1 was always the goal. Um, junior college was just a way in. We, we, it was a big financial struggle to pay for junior college, um, which kind of forced me to work harder. It was a lot of times where I'd like, I, I would say, hey, like, you know, telling my parents I'd drop out, I would leave because just a financial burden. Um, and I said, you know what, like you literally focus on school and let us focus on everything else. Um, so I focused on school, focused on track, and um, it, it really opened up a lot of opportunities to me. I, I had a few coaches back home in Bermuda that had connections with coaches, but they didn't really pan out in my favor. Um, but not just what I was able to accomplish at junior college was was really great, and it, it made me very marketable as an athlete, um, just pretty much being able to do three events doing 100, 200 and 400. So like a lot of schools see that as like, oh yeah, like that's really great. You know, a lot of people can only do 100 or only do 200 or only do two of the three. But since I had that, that versatility to, to be able to do all three, it was, it was made myself very marketable. Um, but yeah, I took some really great trips. Uh, some schools that I really loved, it didn't really pan out in my favor, but um in the end, it honestly came down to Purdue and Clemson. So, uh, um, so what was like that recovery process like? Did you have to like work your way up to the speed that you were at before? Um, you said you punctured, or I'm sorry, you, uh, my, if I get it wrong, but you, you punctured your, ki your kidney and your lungs. Yep. So, so what um, was that like? The the breathing and all that. What was that like? And just it, getting the rhythm. For a while, yeah, I know. Coming, trying to, I came back pretty fast. So my my accident happened, I want to say early December 2000, uh, 2012. Um, and I had a track meet for Bermuda for my country in April. And I was honestly on my way back to making it. I almost made it. But I just kept getting injured. Um, like my body just wasn't up to par. It wasn't really cooperating with what I wanted to do. <laughs> so essentially, I just took the whole year off. Um, and I was able to squeeze into JUCO. It was... It was a really tough battle mentally, emotionally. Um, the physical aspect was my body just was telling, saying, hey, Kyle, like, you need to stop. Like, you need to give me a break. You know, I had really in bad internal injuries, what, let's say, five months ago. So I'm still kind of recovering. Uh, when it came to my lung, it, I had a, a liter of lung around my, a liter of blood around my lung, sorry. Um, so what they done, I was awake. They, I went into the ultrasound and they vacuumed it out. But I had this little like breathing apparatus that they they gave me and I had to use it all the time. Uh, uh, that was stressful. I hated it. But I wanted to get back to, to being better and get back on the track. So you're at Purdue now and um, you're having a lot of success. All-American athlete. You're running uh, the 4x1, four the 4x4, four four, the 200. Um what was it like, you know, finally seeing the reward for all of your hard work and just getting to the point to where you were starting to be successful at track on a higher level and again, a high scale, um, many eyes watching and things like that? I guess in a sense, you, in the moment, you never really sit back and like, it's not really like an awe moment um, because you're so tied up into that that athletic mindset of, okay, well, I have a race to run or what's next. Um, it's not really a glorified moment. The, I guess for an athlete, the, the question is always what's next. Um, may that be D1, may that be like a professional team, may that be for a track athlete, maybe Olympics or, or professional, um, being a professional runner or a professional athlete. So the goal is always to strive and get better, run faster, throw farther. Um, and when it comes to a team, it's it's about success, not about just, you, you know, track and field is it's always an individual race. But mm -hmm. collectively, what do we all want? We always we all want a ring. Right? Everybody wants a ring. 
no matter what sport they're in in D1. So I guess that's the biggest thing is focusing on, okay, guys, like we have to grind and pushing each other. I say the best thing is like the community. Um, being the community on a team, like you butt heads sometimes as everybody does, but like buckling down together and going through the fight and, you know, becoming an All-American with my team, like as a four by four team twice, like, man, just, I don't know, those are memories that you'll hold forever. Just like, I don't know, it's like winning an Olympic medal. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, but, like the Purdue track team, y'all seem to be very, like, close-knit, like, very, yeah. uh, very one, very family-based is what, at least from the outside looking in. Yeah, it's really great. Like, on the track and in the locker room, um, everybody has their own little friends and groups and everything, so we're not, like, all brothers and sisters, but, like, when it comes to collectively as a team, like, we're a family. And, like, no matter, like, if someone's beefing or if someone has problems with somebody else, like that gets squashed all the time as humans, as, as adults, we always have problems with something. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's not, not ever going to be perfect. So yeah, we just get through our quarrels and we all have a race to run. So what was it like running with other people from various countries? <laughs> Cause you weren't the only one that um, yeah. came from a different country or from outside of the United States. It was people from all over. So what was it like just running with people from different backgrounds? And then not only that, a lot of those other athletes from other countries are also known on a high level um, yeah. in their country as well and ran for their country. So what was it like just working with other people? It's great. Just, I don't know, at, at the end, at the end of the day, we're all athletes, but actually I knew, I knew Kennard and KP from previous track meets um, throughout like competing for, for Bermuda. Like they competed for Bahamas, but it's, we had this, we had this, uh, what was it, a funny Instagram story one time where the four by four all American team was literally, everybody was from a different country. We had America, Jamaica, Bermuda and Bahamas. That was my whole four by four team. That was all American. So like, it's just stuff like that. You can be, oh yeah, you know, like we're all brothers, but from different countries type of thing. Um, it's just mad love, like just, I guess seeing people's different culture and different ways they do things um, collectively, like it's just so diverse and coming together is just the greatest thing ever. So like you ran um, for the Olympics, um, represented your country for the Olympics. Is that what, um, when you ran for- No, Olympics? I ran, I came to Australia and ran for the, uh, I did the Commonwealth Games, okay. which is the only, uh, the Commonwealth Games is the only other worldwide event that has all sports so i guess in a, in a sense it's just under the olympics because the olympics has every single sport where commonwealth games is the only other event that has every other sport okay and what was that experience like just um you know oh, i was so scary <laughs> so what? I, was, yeah, I was nervous nervous yeah yeah that was the first as a i wasn't a professional but i was um <clears throat> i had just finished school i was trying to you know, go, go to being a pro, but that was my first senior track meet, um, where you, you race people like Usain Bolt and like those big athletes like that. So yeah, I was, I was scared. Like I've, I've ran in big crowds like that before, but just the intensity and like the commotion of, oh yeah, the big names of the people that you see on TV that you see <laughs> running. Every right. But like, Hey, these guys we're in a, we're living in the same village. Like I might, what if they're in my race? <laughs> right. So you put down your spikes now. Yeah. You picked up the weights. What made you do that? Or I mean, I don't know. The spikes may not be down for good, but uh, it seems like you kind of traded one for the other. How did you get into weightlifting? And uh, is is running still something that's on uh, on your on your agenda or in your future? No, nah, my run, my my track career is over. <laughs> oh wow! Well, why is um, that? I'm too big now. I probably gained about forty five pounds since since I put down my spikes. Maybe even more than that. I think I was weighing uh, track season. I was weighing about one seventy, one sixty five when I was like prime track. But now I'm probably about two hundred, two ten. So talk about That's that process, and I know building up your body um and your muscles and you know that's a yeah. whole different ball game what made you what spiked your interest in that I like going to the gym I had a I had a coach back in Bermuda who was a bodybuilder my track coach he um he did the same thing he transferred from 
being a track athlete to being a bodybuilder, but he actually went to the Olympics in, uh, in Atlanta, 96, I believe. Um, but I went to one of his competitions uh, years ago when I was, maybe when I was about 17. Um, but I liked it. Like, you know, just the dedication, the mindset. I feel like when I quit track and I just, I knew that my track career was over that I wanted to, I was like, I like going to the gym, but I wanted a reason to train harder. As an athlete, we we have to have goals. I don't know about everybody else, but I can speak for myself, but I have to have a goal. I'm like, why am, I go to the gym, why am I training? Training for a reason. Um, and I was like, well, I have the genetic ability. I have the like mindset, the structure, the, I have the ability to build muscle and act, like actually be good at bodybuilding. So why not give it a try? So even if I never competed, um it was just a mindset of okay well I want to train harder this is the reason why I'm training harder and so what has been the biggest reward from it um you know of course the body the muscles but um I imagine do you are you're healthier because you're eating a certain way or are you on a restrictive diet you know I worked with a girl yeah. before who bodybuilding yeah. and she was on a very strict diet especially around like competition time yeah, I've, um, it's made me more, what can I say, more disciplined because you have to, with it, the thing is about bodybuilding, after everything has to be key. You can't afford to slack off the slightest bit or track and field. Like I slacked off a lot. <laughs> I wasn't really on a, 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 a food program. I ate whatever I wanted to. Right. Now, when it comes to bodybuilding, as you know, and as you said, like it's really strict. You have to you have to count calories and macros. It's, it's so much more into it. Like training isn't the only thing that goes into bodybuilding. It's taking care of your body, like what's internally taking care of your body with what you put in it, like food, um, sleep. It's it's a little bit of getting into a routine and some structure. Um, but it's reward wise, it I don't know, it, it motivates other people, honestly. Um, I found that a lot of people that follow, I'm not really a social media person, but a lot of people that grow my social media, like a lot of kids and guys growing up, they, they feel influenced. Um, and my thing, I tell everybody all the time, don't look at someone like me. Don't look at, like, don't get intimidated by the size, but, you know, just follow your own journey. Like, just, you know, keep working hard every day because I obviously didn't start looking like this. I didn't just wake up one day and like, oh yeah, I'm bigger. <laughs> right. It doesn't work that way. Like it, it takes time. It's it's weird because bodybuilding is like a long distance race, and I was a sprinter, so mm -hmm. I had to adapt yeah. to and and I had to adapt. And the mindset was like, okay, well, you know, I want to grow this body part. Like I want to grow my legs, and man, I've been working on trying to grow my legs for about four years. <laughs> like they've come up, but I'm still mm -hmm. like, oh, they're not big enough. So is it like dangerous? um to a certain extent training your body to a certain extent to where you know you're losing so much fat and just muscle you know I'm just curious is it you know yeah. I think everybody well, just sees it like oh you're fit you're fit so it means you're healthy um because I think uh, I know a girl that was on TikTok she was just saying like it's not sustainable in terms of diet and like body training long term to live like that so talk about that a little bit no it's not really I'd say when you're getting ready for a competition, it's not healthy at all. You're literally killing yourself. <laughs> like what you're, are you doing? You're depleting, you're depleting your body. You're 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 starving yourself. Um, you're pretty much working your body to depletion, to burn all the fat but keep the muscle. You will lose some muscle, but you restrict the calories. Um, so you reduce your calories slowly. I I know I got down to by about twelve hundred calories, which is probably less than what you would eat in a daily basis okay like it's less than what the average female would eat is 1200 calories on top of that having to train aggressively and then still and do two two hours of cardio a day mm -hmm. like it's it's a lot of stress on your body i know it's oh man it's rough it's i the if someone's ever seen like the the videos of like boxers and stuff and they're sitting in those sauna suits and it's really like that, but that's probably the smallest gist of it. It's just so, watching somebody in a sauna suit. So I was going to say, is it like intimidating though when y'all go to competitions and 
or is it like a thing to her like oh he think he got the best body or like I'm I'm bigger I don't know is it like a like a comp I know it's a competition because you are competing but is yeah. there like any intimidation or any what is that like you know just being around so many other people who all got mu- you all got muscles so yeah. so kind of you know. sort of I've done one competition uh, I'm gonna do one in 2025 but you it's a mixture of good bad and ugly because good because you meet some really great people like you meet you meet some really great people from competing because you're all, you're all going through the same thing but then you meet a you see a lot of people who walk around with their chest out and like they're the biggest thing since sliced bread <laughs> they just have those egos where oh yeah like i'm not gonna lose i'm the best looking guy here where i don't know there was i have one really good friend that i met he was like I don't know. We found each other on Instagram and we followed each other's com- like competition prep up until the day we competed where we finally actually met each other face to face. And I was like, man, bro, I've been seeing you like you've been looking good. He was like, bro, I've been saying the same thing to you. <laughs> so- <laughs> and he was like, it's like weird because we go up, we're waiting in the line to go get tan. Um, it's like, bro, man, you like, you look silly. You look crazy and this, that and the other. I'm like, man, I'm saying the same thing to you, but it's weird because as bodybuilders, you never see yourself what from face value. Mm-hmm. Um, you always see yourself less than what you actually are. And then someone who sees you is on the outside looking in. It's like, you actually look re- like really good. So It's a big mental game, though. I was just ready to ask, what goes all yeah. into Because I know you say you guys tan um, to prepare. <laughs> is it to, like to make your muscles look more defined? Yeah. Or what are the judges looking for? I know you guys like have to pose and you yeah. know all of that. Like what, is, <laughs> like, what are they looking for? I know, like, is it to see who's uh, the biggest, who's the most toned, the shape? Like, it's the difference between class. So, what I do is classic physique, which is like, I guess, like underwear, I guess you can say, where it's more like an athletic look, but more muscular uh, they want someone who's really toned um with some really good muscle definition that's not overly sized big like a massive bodybuilder um but the judges look for so many different things they can look for skin quality if your skin's bad they can look for like sh- it's called being shredded like being toned uh like for muscle separation like all the different lines that separate the muscles like one thing about when you when you shred down, you will see muscles that you never even knew were there. Like, oh, it's a muscle like there. And like I thought it was this one big muscle, but it's actually another one right here. It's weird. Um, muscle definition, like skin quality, even when you pose, just shaking. The less you shake, the 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 better it is. So yeah, I would say I tell people all the time, like posing is harder than training. Because when you pose, I might be it might be a pose where I'm I'm posing my back, but literally everything from my feet, from my calves to my hamstrings to my glutes have to be tense, my arms. So it's even though I'm showing my back, the judges will literally judge you from top to bottom. So let me ask, I think you mentioned a couple of things, your mental health, the image, keeping up this mm-hmm. image, does this start to weigh on you? Because, you know, you said... Uh, other people see you as one way you see yourself as a different way. So um, bodybuilding, how does that impact your mental health? Or do you always feel like you have to look a certain way, look good, or does it take a toll on you at all? Or is it kind of, is it more so a confidence booster? Um, I would say post-competition is, is like postpartum depression because you, you train for years. Let's say in hindsight, I trained for two years. I dieted for five months. And then everything's over in about five minutes. And then you're like, okay, well, I did all of that. What's next? You kind of get that sense like you're lost. You're like, <laughs> I did all of this. Like, what's <laughs> next? Um, like, I'm done. But as as an image going on a day-to-day basis, no, I don't mind. I, I, I'm one person that just runs my own race. Um, I stay in my lane. Like, I've I've met a lot of great guys in the gym. I've, I've had guys approach me in the gym and say stuff and one thing that i'd say is my mom always told me to be humble um no matter if you're first or last you know like no matter what you how you feel what's going on just always be humble and that's why i like to help people in the gym um mental health ways i 
it's more or less I get times where I just get lazy. I'm like, I don't feel like training today or like I just take a week off. So it's yeah, I'd say one thing about mental health I must say, sorry, I'm just jumping everywhere, but oh, no, you're, you're good. <laughs> but mental health is a re really big thing, especially nowadays in society. But I feel like especially with what I do, when my mind isn't right my training's not right. I don't look right. I don't feel right. I don't eat right. I don't eat how much I'm supposed to eat. It affects training. It affects everything. But when life is smooth and life is good and I'm happy and things are going great, like, man, I grow a lot better. Like I eat a whole lot better. It's yeah. It, it, it kind of goes hand in hand, but when it comes to walking around on a daily basis of this image, it doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm not one of those people that I don't really care how other people look at me and see me. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> I know that's a big part of how you, how you feel is how you look. And it, it definitely yeah. really show on the, on the outside during competition. So I got to ask yeah. what gets you pumped up or boosted up, like either before a track meet um, or in the gym, what, what's on your playlist? What artists, what music, what's top song? Oh, like, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Why? What would you listen Honestly, to? Oh, uh, on my way to the gym, I listen to some out of pocket stuff. Uh man, I've listened to like stupid stuff like country or like old, like really old songs. Um, oh, wow, I wasn't expecting it. Okay. Like man, what? Name a few. Name a few. Man, what's one song I've been listening to? Uh every time I leave the city or I'm in the city, I've been uh, I can't remember his name. It's that song Ain't No Love I don't in think the Hard City. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Or give us, give, give me your your favorite art, top artist. <clears throat> top artist. I've been drink, I've been listening to Juice World a lot. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, sometimes I listen to Drake. It's weird because, depending on what I'm doing in the gym, mm -hmm. um, I switch up the playlist. So I'm listening to something. Like if I'm lifting something heavy, if I'm squatting or benching, then. I'm probably listening to like heavy metal because it's screaming in my ear and it's getting aggressive. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I wasn't expecting that. Anytime, yeah. Anytime outside of training though, I can't listen to it. I'm okay. like, what am I listening to? It's weird. Right. Right. That's what I've listened to in a gym for the all through Purdue, like all through training. But then if I'm like, like late training session, when I'm just getting pumped. Uh, it's more or less like hip hop. I'm listening to like Drake or, or Gunna or sometimes I listen to Kodak. Okay. 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 So you got a variety, very diverse uh, yeah. music profile. So Yo, if I'm doing like arms or something, I'll listen to like my posing music. Mm -hmm. So I try to, my posing music is really like slow. Sometimes it's even like flute music or something that really flows really well. So what kind of, what, what, what music do you guys listen to in like Bermuda? Um, are you guys more of like the Caribbean, Jamaican <laughs> vibes are yeah. you afro beat or a little mixture of all of it um more or less caribbean music jamaican vibes um okay. but there's uh so many africans out here i've been i've been getting onto a lot of african music out here as well um i even listen to like uh what is it uk rap uh, i can't run a name for it okay i haven't, yeah, I haven't really gotten too much into the uk but i'm definitely into like yeah. The Caribbean, Jamaican, Afrobeats, like I, that's probably one of my top playlists in my phone. Yeah. Um, so, so what's next? What can we expect from you, either from you know bodybuilding? I you say you put the spikes down. Uh, anything you're working on? What can we expect from you? Competition. I know you mentioned something about 2025. What's uh, yeah. what's coming up for you? So next next comp is about 20 season eight 2025, which is about April in 2025. Um, I was going to do October next year, but I'm going to go back home. I haven't seen my family in about five years, so I'm going to go back home. I have a daughter now, a um, little two-year-old oh, girl. Oh, congrats. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to take her home um, so she can visit my family. And yeah, just train, get bigger, try to win. I came second in my first show, and I was kind of salty because I should have came <laughs> first. <laughs> I was you like- that winning mindset. Yeah, it was the, I was the crowd's favorite and not the judge's favorite. So, um, yeah, I'm coming back with a vengeance. Hey, that's the best way to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for thank taking you. the time to talk with me on College Playground. Uh, let people know uh, where they can follow you if you want to share your social media. Um, 
real quick? All right, my Instagram is TTV Tough Biz, T U F F B I Z. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm follow for follow. So show me, I'll hit me up, watch the journey. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, though. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for tuning in to College Playground. Again, I'm your host, Sydney Simone. Thank you.